can you walk us through in terms of like what you're seeing in quality, what you're seeing in cost or, or, or the speed with which you can innovate? Just, you know, give me all the details of what's so cool about what you're doing, because I think it's awesome. Well, and that's 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 yeah. So, I mean, we're a manufacturer. We get it. And so traditionally what companies would, would do is say, well, you can design it differently and you can charge more to compensate for the increase of added manufacturing price. But that wasn't our, our price. We're like, we sell a shroud to Home Depot for, you know, 25 bucks. Right. They, they don't care whether it's 3D printed or injection molded. Like, and so in order to compete with them, in order to compete with um, these companies overseas we, and 3D print it, we have to have the right costs, compete with injection molding. We have to have the right quality. It can't break or it can't drop or it can't take, you know, and it has to be scalable. If they say, if Home Depot says, I want 10,000 parts, how am I going to get 10,000 parts? And so those three areas are what drove us to get the area that, that we needed. So we worked with companies, you know, we're, we're a little different because we're not trying to innovate something that we can charge more for. You know, we're, we're trying to eliminate the containers that we are getting from overseas. We're trying to eliminate those containers and just print our parts. So we have to be cost effective. We have to have the right quality and we have to be able to hit print and get 10,000 pieces. So, so how do you do that without disclosing like some secret sauce? Is it in, is it in the material selection? Is it in the, the, the volume that you're able to push through these printers? I mean, how do you be competitive with injection molding offshore? I mean, that's like the holy grail of cheap cost. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. And, and the competitive aspect is we've, we've worked with BASF. We worked with Photocentric. We've, you know, DSM, Converso, like all these big companies who said, we need to get the right cost. Yeah. Photocentric, they got our vision. They're a company in the UK and they understood our vision on the cost side of it. So we worked with them. We tried to get the right quality of material as well. And, and then from then we just, a few months ago, earlier this year, we hit print and we printed uh, at eight thirty or eight o'clock in the morning. We hit print, and by four thirty in the afternoon, we delivered sixty thousand little binocular tethers to a, a local company. Actually, amazing! Like, did you say sixty thousand? Sixty thousand pieces. Good grief! So, what is the uh, what is the underlying three D printing technology that you're using? Uh, is, uh, is it an FDM? Is it a SLM? What are you using? So the majority of what we do is on our photocentric magnets because, I mean, they're fairly inexpensive to buy a printer. They're like 20 grand a piece. Yeah, so they're, right. not your, they're not your half million dollar machines. And, and so we could scale up very quickly. And so the LCD technology allows us to print. Um, I think we're on that one print, we're printing 800 pieces at a time on a bed. And we've wow. just... We just uh, don't have one here, but we like pens. We started producing promotional pens and we can print 400 at a time. Like we can print 5,000 promotional pens a day that are just this really cool, unique looking. And, and that tchotchkes are like the, the most commoditized thing in the world. So you're, you're telling me you are actually in the game in 3D printing right in your own facility and, and you're, you're able to do it effectively, competitively against all comers. This, this is fantastic.